What's good guys? It's your boy Danny. I'm just showing you how to do the EGR delete today. This is going to show you how to do it in bay and also outside of the bay. Please watch the whole video. I explain everything so you know how to do it. If you don't watch the whole video, you might do something before you're not supposed to do it. Just watch it all before you do anything so you can do everything properly and know what's going on. With that being said, good luck. Enjoy the video. The EGR pipe comes from right here and it goes right here to the intake. I know the intake's not there right now, but that's where it would go, right? And then all the vacuum hoses and all that. So you're taking this off right here. This goes through a hole through the block, right? And then off the backing plate, the backing plate has a hollow, you know, it's hollow in the back so that there's another hole here to the exhaust side. So the exhaust gases come from here, go through here to the pipe, and then the actuator will allow the exhaust gases to in and out with the butterfly valve inside the intake. So to take this backing plate off, we're just gonna take off eight of these bolts right here and they're 10 millimeters so i'm going to do that now stay on here as you can see it's not coming off even though i took all the bolts off um no worries just take a little flathead or or you know a pry bar and take a little hammer and just give it a couple little love taps in the corners it'll pop right, right off so i literally just put this here tapped it a few times came right off all that nasty carbon buildup from over the years of EGR going back and forth. So that's the little hole right there. This is what we're going to um, tap and, and uh, you know, thread up so that we can plug it. This is why I said this hole didn't matter because it's a, if you see, it goes right through. So this hole doesn't even matter. It's just literally for the backing plate. And as you can see, there's space enough in there for the EGR gases to go along from here to there into the pipe of the intake. Um, so now let's get to this. Look, I put the light in the exhaust hole and you can see the actual hole, how long it is. And it's pretty long. So um, if you look from the side of the block, you can see it's gotta reach from there to there. So you can get a pretty long bolt. Um, otherwise you're gonna have a hot pocket in there, which isn't that whole big of a deal, but that's the whole reason we're doing this in the first place is so that we don't have a big hot pocket like the whole backing plate. So get you a decent sized bolt. I got 16, M16 with a 1.50 pitch. Um, so now I'm going to tap that with a 16 by 1.50. Make sure that if you're doing this with the motor together still, that you make sure that you don't have these valves open. The reason I say that is because you're gonna be, you know, uh, threading this and there's a lot of shavings that comes out of this so if they're sealed you can just simply put compressed air in there and blow all of it out you know poke an eye in there turn the light on and you can see in there and make sure that none of that stuff stays in there because if you leave shavings in there it's going to go into your motor and then your motor's going to get scored and then you're going to need a motor so some uh paper towels down there and uh make sure that uh the valves are closed because if not you will get shavings in the motor and you don't need that um if not do it with the head off and if not, just do the plug on the end. Um, the whole point of this though is to make sure that you have no turbulent air that's just in there. So now- and take it. This is 16 by 1.5. So M16, 1.5. Take it to the back of the block. Make sure it's straight, as straight as you can get it. Give it a little love tap, get it in there. Double check it, make sure it's straight. Man, let's see here. Where did I put it? It's right here. This is my twister for it. The handle, essentially. Now, to finish up, you're going to use some red thread locker. Put it on the bolt. You can cake this stuff because you're never going to open this again. Um, I got my bolt here. If you did this properly, the bolt should thread right in. Shouldn't be too harsh. It's gonna have a little bit of tension being that it's such a big bolt, but you know, put thread locker along that whole thing, zap it in, and that's it. So as you can see, I use a lot of red thread locker just because this is never opening up again, so I sent it. Um, Yes, I zapped it on with the impact. Do not zap it flush with the impact. The reason I say that is because this is aluminum, you can strip this out. So take your ratchet, 
um, this is a 22 for me. You might get a plug or whatever you know, whatever you got for your your um, 16 by 1.5, by 1 and uh, just kind of get it hand tight. I, I can keep twisting it, but I'm not gonna. There's no reason to twist it anymore. Just get it flush so that it's giving you a little bit of, of pushback and then leave it because if you go any tighter than that, you're gonna strip it out, bolt's gonna come out, and then you're gonna have to tap bigger. So that's it, it's done. You look in here, so you can see your valves. Like I said, make sure you get, get all the um, shavings out, make sure there's no shavings in there. And that's the hole right there. You can't see in there per se because it's just too deep. But I got a pretty long bolt. You guys saw it. It's all the way in there flush. Um, I'm trying to see. Let me see if I can feel it. No, I can't even feel it. It's pretty deep in there. That's what I mean. So you can tap even further if you want than I did. Um, that bolt, you saw how long that bolt was. It's about two inches. If you really wanted to do three, you could. There's no reason to, but you can. Um, like I said, there's a hot pocket in there. That's all. But it's done. That's it. All right, guys. So... Um, now that this is the motor in, um, now, you know, if you guys are familiar, you know, if you guys had taken your motor out or had your head off, you know that your bolt is in the back of the head. Now, if you didn't put it into the back of the head because you're doing this in bay and like, you know, the motor is in bay, this right here is going to have an EGR pipe that goes down to that piece that I showed you guys where it goes to the block, but it doesn't go to anything except for the backing plate, the backing plate. So, um, there are two bolts down here that are a pain to get to. You're going to need like a swivel and I believe it's either a 10 or a 12. And then here is going to have this big, um, it's, it's something like 32. You're going to need an adjustable and, uh, you're going to need a lot of leverage because it's a pain and it's all cooked up on there from heat. Um, now if you are doing this in bay, you're also just going to, um, remove you see right here if you see that that's a stud right and then you got down here there'll be another stud where you remove the egr pipe you would have put your sandwich plate there um because the egr deletes come with two right so you'd put one down there and you would you would fasten it down with um those 10 mils right there Um, once that's tight and you know, it's it's got a gasket on already. So you're all set you do this one up here as well um, Once you do these ones you're done for that But now you need to get rid of all those vacuum lines because I know you just pulled out your EGR piping and you're like, what do I do with all these vacuum lines? So Looking at this from here. We have a vacuum pump that's under this intake right here. So this is my My example so you guys can see under that right now if we're looking at this one, this is the front. That's the front, right? So underneath this intake right here, it looks like this. Now you guys aren't gonna be able to see this, but you're gonna be able to feel it. So you'll take your hand and you'll dig right by the engine oil dipstick and you'll find those two bolts, right? Um, so these two bolts right here, these are, I wanna say 12. Um, so you'll need a deep socket 12 or, you know, a, a 12 millimeter extension. I just say deep socket 12 because, uh, you know, if you got a little short one, it's not gonna, it's gonna bump this stud right here. So you can take these two 12s out so that you can get to this vacuum piping. Um, so this vacuum right here will come up. This has to stay in your vacuum delete. A lot of these guys ask, do, can I delete this? Why do I need this? I'll explain it in a second. So if you're, if you're turboed, you want, to, you want to get rid of this. You want to get rid of um, this butterfly valve right here, which opens up a plenum right here. And um, if you look, it opens and closes that, right? So um, this vacuum opening um, creates pressure to open and close that butterfly valve. How does it decide that? This VSV right here. So the way that we're gonna do our vacuum lines is, if you look here, we got an A and we got a B, right? So what B does, or excuse me, let's start with A. What A does, it goes from here, right? From the top one. Um, so, you know, if you want, you can try to dig your hands in here and do this by feeling. It's really harsh. Honestly, you're gonna wanna take these off and get it out of there. So anyways, A goes over to this VSV, right? 
from this VSV, because this VSV is reading um, the amount of pressure that it needs to open or close the valve, depending on what RPMs you're at. So we're usually around 4,500 RPMs. So from A, it goes to the VSV. From the VSV, it goes up, right? It'll go up through here, and it will go to this butterfly valve right here. So that's what you're seeing right here, right? That hose, so I just did one hose, one rubber hose. There's hard lines here if you want to use the hard lines, but, you know, you're going to have to mock up your own because the other ones are attached to that. So I just did one rubber hose down to this VSV from the butterfly valve and then from the VSV to A in the vacuum tank, right? From B, B is going to go up, right? It's going to go through here, and it's going to go through this, this intake runner as well. And now we're going to go back to this one where so we can see it on the um, motor. Once it comes up, right, it's going to come up here. I got it going into a T. So the reason it's going into a T now is because this T has to go here. So if you look at the motor, you know, intakes are coming from over here. This is in the back right next to your brake booster. This brake booster you guys should have never touched if you were doing the EGR delete. Shouldn't have to touch anything with this. Um, so anyways, that T comes from B of the vacuum tank on the bottom, right? Comes up to the T. This T goes over to here. Now, the reason we need this one, this goes to our heater VSV. We need this for our heater core so that we can have heat in the car. Now, from there, that's, that's all good. Don't worry about none of that now. Um, so now, these are EGR stuff. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, you know, go from one to the other and then from this one to this one. Now what this does is it just completes the circuit so that you don't have any open passages. So same thing, this is the throttle opener. This is OEM, how it is. You just wanna take that and go down to here. So the reason I got this liquid wrench also is um, this will help you slide these um, tight vacuum lines onto all the piping so that it makes it a little easier. Now, um, the other vacuum lines that you're gonna need, don't mind that, um, is your power steering. This power steering, so if you look, there's two. And the reason there's two is there's a regular one for the vacuum and then there's a low pressure one. I'll explain that one in a second. So this is your main one from the front of the intake. It's gonna go down into this hose over here on the top of the power steering pump, right? Below that one goes from here to the back of your metal timing um, marker, right? Now, the reason it goes through there, it goes over here, and it comes over here into the intake. Now, we need this pressure for when we're going low speeds and power steering is being used. It's going to allow um, pressure buildup to make it easier for you to use uh, the power steering at lower speeds. Now... Um, you got your PVC up top, that's stock. I use the clear piping because that's what I had. And then, um, or my bad, that's your, your CCV. This is your P PVC. And this is stock also, it's just going right here. Um, other than that, that is it for your vacuum lines. Oh, and your pressure fuel regulator one is stock as well. There's also a VSV that was here that you can just get rid of completely. Other than that, Everything else is normal. Last thing I forgot to note. So if you look here, this is a regular small hose right here, right? So you got to get it in there. This is a pain. This is where this comes in handy. I took this little skinny flathead and uh, I put some of the liquid wrench on there and then squished this in there. Put that clip on there, right? This leads down to here. And then you have to go to a thicker one because this right here, this piping, this will not fit around that piping on the back of this plate. So you got to put a bigger one around this I zip tied it just for safe measure, um, but you put a little liquid wrench on that side and then you squeeze it into this, this um, bigger piece right here and then you slide it onto there, right? And the last one that I forgot um, is I plugged this one. So I just literally took a vacuum line, cut it and then glued this screw in there. And it's just gonna um, close up that one because we don't need that one at all. Last thing I forgot to tell you guys is this hose, right? goes over to this VSV and it goes over also to a charcoal canister that goes in the corner there. You can either delete the charcoal canister or you can hook it back up to how it was. What the charcoal canister does is it soaks in all of the vapor, vapor, um, the fuel vapor, right? Because the fuel evaporates from your tank. It doesn't always stay as liquid and it soaks that up and it goes 
through the VSV when the VSV sees that it has enough pressure and it sends that vapor fuel back into the intake. So if you want, you can hook that back up to how it was and keep that there. I deleted it. So if you delete it, that vapor, fuel, um, vapor builds pressure in the tank and you need that pressure to be released. If not, it'll pop. Um, you can blow it up. It's just not a good thing. So what I did, you can literally get these breathers for 10, 15 bucks from O'Reilly's and it literally goes right over the hose that goes straight to the charcoal canister. You can delete everything else. That just goes over the VSV and you can get rid of the charcoal canister. It pulls out with this tab right here. Now, if you don't want to use a breather in the engine bay, what you can also do is you can get a vented fuel cap. You literally take your fuel cap out. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about the one that you twist. That will have a valve in it if you buy it and it releases the uh, the pressure once the pressure gets to a certain amount of PSI and it allows the vapor fuel to escape. So if you don't do one of those two, then you got to keep your charcoal canister. If you're deleting your charcoal canister, just make sure you get a breather for either side. You don't have to do both. If you get one for the tank, then you can plug this one. If you don't get one for the tank, then you got to do this breather up here or keep the charcoal canister. With that being said, that's it. If you did everything right, car should start right up mine has open headers so it's gonna be loud but here we go so just some last notes so you guys know what's going on because i know you guys are gonna have a ton of questions and a bunch of stupid stuff yes i have dash lights on my engine check light on is for an O2 sensor that's downstream. This is the mid pipe one. I don't have an exhaust in, so I have a check engine light on. You may have a check engine light on if you are a 1993 to a 2000 SC, or if you're the updated 2Js that have the sensor from the intake for the EGR. On a 92, it does not, so I don't have any cell codes. In order to fix this, you have to put a resistor in for the guys that are 93 to 2000 for the SCs. It's also the same for the other 2Js. I believe if it's not distributor, but the 93s are distributor and they have the sensor. So, so it all depends. You're going to have to do that one on your own. You're going to have to figure that out. But it's literally just the resistor. You wire it up so that it gets some resistance and it tricks into thinking that the EGR is working properly. Now, the other thing is, you guys are also wondering, why is this dude's track light on? Why is the dude's car not starting up immediately? My car didn't start up immediately because my battery is going. I need to go get a new battery. That's why you hear it's going ding, 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 and real slow. And on top of that, I manual swapped it. So mine was an auto before, now it's a manual. I've had it cleared with no codes when I have my sensor in. It is possible, but as of now, it does have the code for the downstream, and that is it.